Excellent. Hey guys, welcome back to CES 2017 coverage. I'm at Corsair. I'm going to start off talking about what Corsair is most well known for, at least what they started off with, I think, in the PC space, which is memory. Uh, what they've done here is taken their Vengeance uh, memory modules that have LEDs in them, like these over here, and they've made them RGB, because as soon as they give people the ability to have lights in their memory, people are like, we want those lights to be able to be different colors. So it's a Vengeance RGB, RGB series. Uh, we're expecting it later this quarter, um, so it's not quite ready yet, but they've been working on developing the software. So they have Corsair Link, which integrates with, that, with them. You can control each LED individually. You can control them as a group. You can assign different groups with different profiles to them. Uh, and then you can go in here and adjust different effects, of course. So you can if, change the effect of how quickly the colors change and make it faster or slower. Any of the effects that you might expect uh, when it comes to like breathing and color change and that kind of thing is already integrated here, even though they're still using kind of a beta version of the software. So that's pretty cool. There's a challenge with integrating RGB LEDs because they didn't want to have any external wires or anything like that connected to it. So it's all controlled directly through the DIMM slot, or the, the it's powered through the DIMM slot and communicates with the motherboard through the DIMM slot. But it also has uh, actually a, the uh, capability to store your profile on the memory module itself. So if you have it installed in the system and configure stuff with the Corsair Link software, you can take the DIMMs out, put, it in a di put them in a different system, and they'll keep doing the RGB cycle or whatever uh, profile that you set up. So that's kind of cool. I wanted to really quickly mention this right here, the Force Series MP500. It's been a while since Corsair came out with a new SSD, so they decided to jump up to the newest and fanciest type of SSD that you can do, which is uh, an M.2 SSD with NVMe support. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about it other than that it's got a nice black PCB, so I'm just going to blend in with your build pretty nicely. A bit of yellow accents on the label uh, as far as what they have here. Available in 120, 240, and 480 gig capacities, M.2 2280 form factor, and they don't have have the read and write speeds listed here, so I don't know what they are, but I think they're pretty good. I believe the reads are well over 2,000 and the writes are in the 1 to 2,000 range, but don't quote me on that. I'm planning on getting one of these and doing a video on it, so uh, I'll bring you more information on that when it's available. Over here we have a new series of power supplies, and these are budget series power supplies. They've had the CM series for quite a while. You know, those are the power supplies that are very good and get the job done, but Kyle and I constant tell, constantly tell people to upgrade them when they have them in systems because you got to peel off the label because it was kind of a, a brighter green color, and then the cabling itself was not quite as appealing as it could have been that had ketchup and mustard going on. So Corsair is replacing that with the TX series right here. They have a 550, 650, 750, and 850 uh, watt versions. They're partially modular, but the cables, as you can maybe see here, are all black. So budget power supply, uh, Corsair quality, no hideous colors that might m mismatch with your build. And, and Get, yeah, get a new power supply. Uh, also, the HX series has been updated. Uh, remove, basically, they've removed the uh, the eye from it. It's just the HX whatever, not the, like the 1200 eye like they have over there. They gutted the uh, Corsair Link capabilities from these power supplies, so they're more straightforward power supplies. But by doing that, they can reduce the price by they said about twenty dollars per unit. And finally, we have the product that I think Corsair was most excited about, which is the newest version of their K95 keyboard, which is called the K95 RGB Platinum, because everything that's platinum is usually the best that's possible. But basically, the way Corsair has updated the uh, previous K95 is they've added a light bar across the top. Uh, it's got 18, 18 different LED illumi illumination areas, and uh, they're all very smooth, so you can't really tell where the LEDs are. So as it's doing a nice effect across there, you don't like to see, oh, there's an LED and there's an LED. It's just sort of a nice fluid motion. Of course, you're going to have the Corsair software available for these, which is insanely powerful. And what you can do is when it comes to configurations and stuff, and they have community members who have uh, dropped in uh, profiles that you can load up and that kind of thing, which is really cool. They've taken the G keys over here, the macro keys, and they've narrowed it down to just a single row, which is a little bit simpler. Uh, and those do have texture on them, uh, so you can feel if you're touching those or touching the keys next to them. This one is using Cherry MX speed switches, uh, which Corsair recently launched just this past year, and uh, I believe they're going to have them in other varieties as well, but you know, the, the speed switches are unique to Corsair right now from Cherry, so they're, they're trying to push those as much as possible. It's got the features that you already had and still want, like your media controls in the top right, and it's got a nice feature for the wrist, wrist rest, which is this little magnetic piece right here. So if you like a little bit more texture, you can flip it to one side. If you like a little bit more smooth, flip it to the other. And a magnet just holds it in place so you can easily change your wrist rest up. 
The final thing is it's got eight megabytes of internal memory. So of course, any of the profiles that you save, you can save internally, uh, even if they're more complex ones like RGB profiles. And then you have three internal profiles that you can switch between using that button uh, on the top left. So you don't need the Corsair software installed if you take the uh, keyboard and use it on a different computer or something like that. This keyboard is supposed to come out in Q1, I believe, and that means should be in the next month or two. And I'm supposed to get one and do a review on it. So you should be seeing a little bit more coverage on this in the near future. But that's all we have here from the Corsair suite, except one last thing I wanted to show you, which is just some so shots of this pink system that they built, which is diva themed, which made me think I needed to steal it and give it to my wife, because she really likes to play diva. It's a really cool build. I mean, you don't see pink builds too often. It's water-cooled inside. Everything is customed out. There's diva logos everywhere. I just thought it was pretty badass, and they shipped this over from Taiwan, um, so it did get a little messed up during shipping, but um, fortunately, it's still working, uh, even though they had to clean up the pink fluid inside that spilled. That's all from Corsair, guys. So thanks again for watching my CES 2017 coverage. As always, leave me comments in the comment section and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And stay tuned for more CES 2017 coverage coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll see you soon.